welcome back to the Maker Jane channel where I share all things English paper piecing from tips and tutorials to projects and more. So if you love EPP like I do, please consider subscribing. In this video, we are going to be discussing needles. As you probably already know, English paper piecing is a hand stitching technique in which Fabric is wrapped around a paper template and stitched together in a unique and specific design. Because it's a hand sewing technique, hand sewing needles are one of the essential tools needed for English paper piecing. If you're curious about the other essential tools that you need to start English paper piecing, I've got a video that I'll link up above for you here where I cover all of the essential tools for English paper piecing. So basically, without a hand sewing needle, you're not gonna be able to piece together your English paper pieces. In this video, we're gonna cover what differentiates one type of needle versus another type of needle, and what is the best needle for English paper piecing. So let's head over to the work table and we will take a look at some needles. As you can see, there are all different shapes and sizes of hand sewing needles. Obviously, hand sewing needles are not all the same. The hand sewing needle that you choose is going to determine the level of enjoyment that you're going to experience in your English paper piecing practice. Having the right needle can make all the difference between total bliss and enjoyment and complete and utter frustration. So we're going to take a look at these needles and we're going to get to know the best ones for English paper piecing. So I'm gonna kind of organize this and we'll get right into it. Every hand sewing needle has an eye on one end and the point on the opposite end. The length of the needle will vary depending on the type of needle that it is and the size of the needle. The size and shape of the eye is also going to vary based on the type of needle that you're looking at. We're gonna get into needle sizes a little bit later in the video. So the first type of needle we're gonna take a look at are called sharps needles. And here are a few different packs of sharps needles that I've acquired uh, in various ways. Sharps needles are a good, just general, kind of multi-purpose needle. I wanna take a closer look at these needles so that you can really see the differences in them. So sharps needles are about medium length. They have a round eye and they have a sharp point. All sharps needles are going to have a sharp point and a round eye. These are really great needles for general hand sewing and can be used for a variety of sewing tasks. The sharps needles are very similar to universal machine needles in the respect that they're great for just general multi-purpose needles. What makes the sharps needles really good for English paper piecing is the shape of the needle in relationship to the eye. So the eye of the needle doesn't widen excessively uh, beyond the width of the needle. So these are great for using with English paper piecing. And as I had mentioned, they come in multiple sizes. So here's a kind of a, a variety pack. This one actually is a vintage set that somebody added. <laughs> this has been used and somebody's added some other needles in here. But these needles right here in the center are the sharps needles and you can tell they have that very similar eye to the ones we just looked at. It's a nice um, skinny eye area, so it doesn't jet out from the width of the needle too much. And it's a nice round eye, and they're very sharp on the end. Another hand needle for English paper piecing are what's called milliner's needles. These are traditionally used in the art of hat making. They're similar to sharps, but they tend to be a little bit longer. They feature a small round eye, much smaller than the sharps eye, 
and they feature a very sharp point. Milliner's needles are fantastic for English paper piecing. Here's another set of milliner's needles with the small eye that you can see there and that sharp, sharp point. The next type of needle that can be used for English paper piecing are called quilting needles, also known as betweens needles. These are specifically designed for hand quilting. So they are much shorter than sharps. So the sharps are here, the quilting needles are here, and you can see the length is much shorter on the quilting needles. Quilting needles have a round eye, very similar to the sharps needles, and they have a sharp point, just like the sharps needles. So in their eye and in their point, they are very similar to sharps needles, except they're much shorter. Quilting needles are great needles for making quick, precise stitches. They're also good for detail work if you're using a heavier fabric, for example. The reason I wanted to share quilting needles with you in this video is because as hand stitchers working with English paper piecing, we may at some point also want to hand quilt our English paper pieced quilts or other projects that we make. So quilting needles are the perfect needle for, for doing that. Here's another set. They're nice and short. Different brands have slightly different designs but you can see they're all very similar. The last type of needle that I want to show you are embroidery or crewel needles. These needles are specifically designed for hand embroidery, which I know a lot of EPPers love to hand embroider. So hand embroidery needles typically have the same length and point as sharps needles. So we're gonna take a look at these vintage needles here for just a second. They are on the smaller size of the scale. But what I want you to notice about these embroidery needles is the shape of the eye. They feature an elongated eye that is able to accommodate thicker thread and embroidery floss. So you'll see that on these needles and you see the same thing on this more modern set of Let's see if I can get that out of there. There we go. You'll see the same thing on this more modern set of embroidery needles as well. They all have that elongated eye. These are great needles for general stitching that requires a thicker thread. So now that we've talked about the different types of needles that exist and which ones I think are best or better for English paper piecing, let's now talk about needle size. So every pack of needles has a number printed on it. So you'll see on this pack over here, it's got you know the count of 20. So you know there's 20 needles in there. But then there's this other number over here, which delineates the size of the needle. On this pack, it says 510. So I'm thinking there was probably a range of sizes in this pack, maybe from five to 10. This pack, says one through five. This pack also has a one slash five. So uh, I know that there was a range because you can see the different sizes in this pack. And this pack here was a range of three to nine. So the number or the range of numbers that you see on a pack of needles actually refers to the diameter of the needle and the width of the eye. In other words, it refers to the thickness of the needle and the thickness or the width of the eye of that needle. The larger the number, the thinner the needle is and the skinnier the eye is going to be. So let me say that again. The larger the number, the thinner or skinnier the needle is going to be. This is important because it's the exact opposite from machine needles. So this packet is a size 11. 
Okay, so you can see how thin the size 11 is. The same brand needle in a size 8 is going to be thicker, just slightly, but it's definitely thicker. So again, in hand sewing needles, the larger the number, the thinner the needle. So this size 11 needle is thinner than the size 8 needle. Generally speaking, I like to group needle sizes into three different categories, similar to how we might categorize the weight of a fabric. So you might have medium to heavyweight fabrics, medium weight fabrics, and light or very fine fabrics. In the same way, I like to categorize sizes of needles. So sizes one through four, again, they're gonna be the widest needle. Those are great for medium to heavyweight fabrics. If you are looking at sizes five through 10, those are gonna kind of be more of your mid-range needle in terms of thickness. Those are good for light to medium weight fabrics, which is right around where our quilting fabrics fall. Most quilting fabrics are a medium to medium lightweight fabric. Needle sizes 10 through 12 are gonna be your thinnest needles and they're gonna work great for your very fine fabrics or fabrics that have a tight weave, such as batiks. So with all that said, we talked about needle types, we talked about needle sizes, what are the best needles for English paper piecing? To be honest, I can't really tell you that because it depends. What I can do though, is I can recommend some needles for you to try out with your English paper piecing. You're really gonna need to experiment with different types and sizes of needles to determine what the best needle is for you, for the fabric that you like working with and for your comfort level and your hand size and all of that. So how can you choose the best needle for your English paper piecing? There's two main things that are gonna help you to decide which needle type and size is best. The type of fabric you use is gonna determine the needle that you should be working with. That's one of the aspects that's gonna help you decide which needle to work with. Quilting cotton has a regular or kind of a middle ground weave. So it's not really tight weave and it's not really loose weave. It's kind of right in the middle. So it's going to be pretty easy to get a needle through quilting cotton. So general purpose needles are the sharps needles like we discussed at the beginning. Those are going to be great for quilting cottons. So you could start with a sharps needle if you know that quilting cottons are what you are going to predominantly work with. There's another fabric that's often used for quilting that is gonna have a tighter weave and those are known as batik fabrics. So I've got a couple of examples here of some batik fabrics. The needle that you use for batiks is gonna need to be thin enough to pierce through that tight weave and not punch a hole in your fabric. So batik fabrics can be a little bit more difficult to work with for some English paper piecing because they're most likely using a needle that's much too big for the weave of the fabric. So I recommend using a finer, sharper needle to get through the batik fabric. And you're gonna want a needle that has a smaller eye. And the needle type that matches up with those traits is the milliner's needles. So I highly recommend that if you like using batiks, try out some milliner's needles. The second factor that's gonna really help you determine what are the best needles for your English paper piecing is the type of thread that you use. So there are various types of thread that different English paper piecers will use. These are just the two that I have and that I typically use. So if you use thread like this, kind of an all-purpose uh, thread, the thicknesses of these two threads are very similar. These can be used with just any general purpose needle, which 
as we know from so far from the video, the general purpose hand sewing needle is the Sharps needles. So Sharps needles work great with this thread. But again, if you are using batik fabric, then you want to think about whether the Sharps are gonna actually work for you. And the only way to really know that is to try, try them out. If you use thinner thread than what I have here, so you can find some really fine weight thread, and it's also known as 100 weight thread, which is even thinner than this 50 weight thread, you're gonna need a much finer needle with a smaller eye. So this eye might be a little bit too big for 100 weight thread. And really the only way for you to know is to try it out. Finer threads are gonna require a smaller eye. So you could try out some sharps in a smaller size. So you'd wanna go up in the size number, maybe size 11 or 12 in a sharp. Or you could also try the, where'd they go? You could also try the milliner's needles in a small size like 11. So I'll be discussing threads in more detail in my next video. So if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe and click the bell so that you get notified on when that next video is posted. So based on these two main factors, based on the fabric that you use and the thread that you use, you should be able to narrow down the type of needles that you need and the size of the needles that you need. So let me just quickly give you what my recommendations are. If you're just starting out and you're using quilting cotton, there's absolutely nothing wrong with using just a regular hand sewing needle, also known as a Sharps needle. If you're more experienced with English paper piecing and you wanna up your stitching game, then I definitely recommend trying out these milliner's needles. And I have tried a couple of different brands. I'm really liking this John James uh, Golden Glide Milliners. And I've purchased a few of the uh, Richard Hemming and Son. And I've used a few of these needles as well. Um, I like both, but I tend to grab these uh, more often. As you can see, I've got more needles in these packs than I do in this pack. If you're interested in hand quilting your projects, then you're definitely going to want to try out some quilting needles, also known as betweens. And of course, if you want to try embroidery, then you can get some embroidery needles. Let's talk about size. Really, it's going to come down to personal preference. And I do want to encourage you to try out a few different sizes in that particular type of needle so that you can really get a feel for what you like best and what fits in your hand best and what is just more comfortable. So for example, if you decided that you're gonna go ahead and just stick with some sharps for now, I recommend going ahead and starting with needles that are ranged within the range of maybe nine, 10, and 11. That's gonna give you a nice skinny needle with a very thin eye so that when you do your English paper piecing and you're running that needle through the edge of the fabric, right on the edge of that template, you've got a thin enough needle to pick up just a few threads from the fabric and stitch your pieces together. You don't wanna go too thick on the Sharps needle because they tend to get pretty thick. This is a size seven needle. You could probably get away with this size. This is actually not a bad thickness. I, I would use these for English paper piecing. Um, but if you want to try some thinner needles, definitely go for the 9, 10, and 11 size of the Sharps. If you decided you want to go ahead and try out some milliner's needles, which are the much thinner and typically longer needles and very common in the world of English paper piecing, then I would definitely recommend starting with size 9, 10, and 11 and just seeing what works best for you. I use size 11 and I just really like how thin they are and how they pierce the fabric and go right through the fabric. My stitches are very minimally seen and it, these are just wonderful size needles. 
But remember, I'm also using batik fabric. So if you don't use batik fabric, you can get away with a thicker needle. And this particular pack of milliners is a size eight. And they're not much thicker. If you look at them up close, we'll just compare these again. You can see that there is a bit of a difference in the size and they are considerably longer. So, um, so just, you know, try different sizes and see what works best for you and what you like working with. If you're interested in doing hand quilting, definitely get some quilting or betweens needles. And I would recommend getting maybe a variety pack that ranges from maybe size eight to size 12. Here's a size seven quilting needle. So a size eight to 12 are going to be thinner than these needles. This pack is a size five to size 10. So that might be a good range. You can start with a thicker needle if you're new to hand quilting. And if you're more experienced or you want more delicate stitches, then work your way up to these smaller needles on the outside. Don't be afraid to experiment with a variety of different types and sizes of needles. As you do, you'll eventually discover which needles work best for you. Let me know down in the comments, what needles are you currently using? And is there a different type or size needle that you wanna try out after watching this video? If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider supporting me over on Ko-fi by buying me a cup of tea. In the next video, I'll be talking all about thread and what the best threads are for English paper piecing. So be sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already and make sure you click that bell to get notified when I release the next video. Until next time, keep on stitching.